Howdy folks, it's me, Josh. So for this video, I decided I wanted to take a step back from the biographies that I've been doing an awful lot of for some reason, and instead take a look at some more broad historical topics. And so one question that I wanted to find the answer to was, how in the world did a bunch of random Slavs ruled over by a bunch of Vikings and conquered by a bunch of Mongols managed to create one of the largest land empires ever seen on the face of the earth. And so, to answer that, we're going to need to take a look back at the history of the Rus. All the way back. So, it's the early 13th century and a group of Slavs known as the Rus were being ruled over by the Rurik dynasty, the aforementioned Vikings. The Rurikids had created an entity known as the Kievan Rus, which organized all the Rus lands under the Grand Prince of Kiev. The system worked well for a while, seeing a golden age, though ultimately falling into internal conflict and succession crises. And then, out of nowhere, a metric crap ton of weirdos on horses just kinda showed up from the east and launched a full-scale invasion in 1237, destroying the Kievan Rus and Kiev along with it. They managed to get all the way to Poland and Hungary until, in 1241, their leader, some dude named Ogadai Khan, died, leading to a breakup of their Mongol Empire. The Rus ended up under the subjugation of one of the pieces of the Mongol Empire, known as the Golden Horde, and things stayed like this for about 150 years, which, to put into perspective, is about the same amount of time between the Civil War and today. The Golden Horde would also end up becoming Islamic as well, which would lead the Christian Rus to feel even more like an occupied people. However, the Golden Horde would also end up falling into internal conflict, weakening their hold over the Rus princes. And so, by the year 1400, the Rus principalities began to revolt against their Mongol occupiers, and after several battles and conflicts, they managed to gain their independence, with the Golden Horde ultimately being dissolved. And so, bada bing bada boom, no more weirdos on horses. And so, with the Rus principalities finally independent, it was only a matter of time before they began consolidating power among themselves once again. And that would ultimately come to fruition with the Grand Duchy of Moscow, under Ivan III, the Great, who, after coming to power in 1462, began to do just that, absorbing neighboring principalities, most notably Novgorod, who was highly involved in the fur trade. Moscow would continue to grow in power and influence until, in 1547, one of Ivan the Great's successors, Ivan IV, the Terrible, was crowned as Tsar of Russia, turning the Rus lands into the United State of Russia. And, in 1552, Russia had conquered the Khan of Kazan, a remnant of the old Golden Horde, which brought them to the Ural Mountains on the border of Siberia. The Urals formed a pretty strong eastern border, so Russia didn't really pay much mind to Siberia, instead focusing on matters in the west, like failing miserably at conquering Livonia. Outside of the fur trade, the Russians didn't really pay any mind to Siberia, so they decided not to expand their borders beyond the year 08. Some random pirate named Yermak just showed up and went out with like 500 dudes and conquered the entirety of the Khanate of Sibir. What? Yeah, uh, needless to say, everyone was just kind of confused about what the heck just happened, particularly Ivan the Terrible, who, after seeing all this chaos unfolding in the East, got really pissed at Yermak, ordering him to come back. However, when he eventually figured out what the heck just happened, he then changed his mind and sent aid. By 1585, Yermak's supplies in Sibir were running pretty thin, and after a ton of raids, he had to abandon the region, only to return the next year with a lot more soldiers, managing to finally subdue the region by the 1590s, allowing Russia to annex the lands up to the Alb and Irtysh rivers. And so, after all this just kinda happened, out of nowhere, Russia gained its first hold on Siberia. Okay, sure, why not? And since Russia still kinda wanted to dominate the fur trade, they decided Eh, what the heck, let's just keep going. So they got some more Cossacks and sent them out to conquer Siberia. The Cossacks were on a roll at this point. They reached the Yenisei River by 1605, the Lena River in 1623, 
and by 1643, they reached the Sea of Okhotsk in the Pacific Ocean, building a bunch of forts along the way. They'd met up with China along the way, but the Chinese formed a much more formidable foe than anything they had faced in their conquest, so the Cossacks decided it wouldn't be such a good idea to pick a fight with them. And so, from the time that Yermak had first conquered the Khanate of Sibir, Russia had managed to take nearly the entirety of Siberia in the span of about 60 years. But if you'd think they'd stop there, you would be dead wrong, as only five years later, they sailed through the Bering Strait, reaching Alaska. Now, let's take a step back real quick, to the late 16th century. In 1598, Tsar Fyodor I died without a clear heir, causing a succession crisis known as the Time of Troubles, which ended the Rurik dynasty's over 700 year rule over Russia. A bunch of random dudes became Tsar, including one Polish guy, and this would only be resolved with the election of a man named Michael Romanov as Tsar in 1613, starting the Romanov rule over Russia, which would last until 1917. It was under him that Russia reached the other side of Siberia, but his successors would begin to focus more on the West, fighting wars against Poland and Sweden. Russia's focus on the West would be taken to a whole new level with the ascension of Peter I, the Great, as Tsar. He took a deep interest in Western society and began westernizing Russia, ultimately culminating with the proclamation of the Russian Empire in 1721. And with that, Russia would further identify itself as a European nation, paying much more close attention to affairs in Europe than out east. And so, Russian expansion in Siberia had all but halted, and wouldn't see any real major developments for over a hundred years. It's 1842, and European imperialism is in full swing. The British Empire saw the potential that the Chinese market had for trade, and this ended up causing the First Opium War, which would result in China being utterly humiliated. After seeing this happen, Russia realized that China wasn't nearly as powerful as they were when they first met them. This was a huge opportunity. And so, they decided to start screwing with them, setting up settlements in what was then the Chinese region of Amur. Seeing what was happening, the Chinese were quite obviously pissed and demanded that the Russians leave immediately, with the Russians just saying, make me. And when China was humiliated yet again in the Second Opium War, Russia got the confidence it needed and essentially just bullied the Chinese into ceding the Amur region. And after China was humiliated yet again, this time by the Japanese in the 1890s, Rebellions in China against foreign influence gave Russia reason enough to launch a full invasion of Manchuria. This would then bring Russia into conflict with Japan, which led to the outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War. Russia thought they could effectively bully Japan like they did with China, but, you know, they lost. Badly. Alongside all this, Russia also began making further pushes into Central Asia as well once again bullying the Chinese into ceding land and bringing themselves into conflict with the British. However, it wouldn't be long before everything they had built would come crashing down. When Russia began westernizing and industrializing, more people had begun to call for liberalization in Russia, which the Romanovs knew couldn't be allowed to happen. And when World War I broke out in 1914 and Russia faced heavy losses and famine, you can probably guess who they blamed. The Tsar. And so, in 1917, Vladimir Lenin led the Bolshevik Revolution against the Russian Empire, leading to its collapse and the end of not only the 300-year Romanov rule, but the over 700-year Russian tradition, replacing it with their godless communist nightmare. And so, just as suddenly as the Russian conquests began, the great empire they had managed to build was brought down and destroyed. But just as those Slavs were conquered by the Mongols, so too did they manage to conquer, building one of the greatest empires ever seen on the face of the earth. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to stick around for more. And hey, you can also subscribe or something. So that's it for this video, well, 
Till next time, see ya.